All right, so I'm going to apologize in advance for the production quality here. This is more just to save the notes for myself because it's so flipping complicated when you tune your truck. I'm using HP tuners. I have a built LQ9 and that the, the bottom end is just a stock sort, short block I balanced out. Um, and the top end, I've done some valve train modifications to uh, ro Rocker Arms custom camshaft. It's not an off-the-shelf one. I had it ground for me. Um, by Roger Vinci, really cool guy, um, and uh, you know some stuff there. Two 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 one one six LSR lifters, but let's cut to the chase here. I am tuning volumetric efficiency here, or that would be the VE table. That's also known as speed density or uh, MAP tuning, so to speak. I'm using the manifold pressure to tune fuel, and what I've done here, I'm going to show you to disable the uh, oxygen sensors. I came in here, I disabled long-term fuel trims. I discovered those were giving me troubles with my cam to begin with, so I don't really use them at all. And I also disabled the short-term, um, and I errored out, right here you can see I disabled the short-term. I also errored out, uh, whoops, I'm in the wrong engine diagnostics. I errored out the uh, mass airflow sensor so it doesn't use those readings, or we hope it's not using them. <laughs> Pretty sure it's not using them. And then I, a lot of people enable the malfunction indicator lights so they know they're in the mode, but I just, I turned it off. It's kind of annoying. I don't know if I'm going to use the MAP sensor at all. I may re-enable it in my uh, final tune. I may not. I, I'm a little undecided on that. Um, some people recommend just using the map sensor. Uh, I've also disabled DFCO, diesel fuel cutoff, by going to, uh, I can't remember, enable engine coolant temperature. I set it to 280. I'll never reach that. Um, another thing I never use is over temp protection. I think that's on exhaust. Cat over temp protect protection, I've completely disabled that. If your catalytic converters, it thinks they're getting a little hot, it's just going to dump fuel and uh, try to cool them off. But uh, it just leads to problems. I noticed in a lot of other people's tunes that I've looked at, they, they just turn that, that feature off. Now, I am warming up. I want to have this at uh, operating temperature. It's about 190 degrees engine coolant temperature. ECT, which I'm logging here. Where is it? Uh, once it reaches, here we go. Once it reaches that, um, I can get a little bit more reliable data, or at least that's the data that's of importance to me when I'm at operating temperature. Of course, I've done sapper tuning all together, just sitting here watching the engine warm up so I could tune some other stuff, but I didn't take notes on that. I need to go back and do that. You can see what I'm logging here. I'm having, I am fighting some false knock. At least I think it's false knock. I have the stock knock sensor settings from an LQ9 engine. I copied into my baseline, long story. I'm working with a LM7 5.3 liter baseline for my tune, um, but uh, because I recycled that old computer. Um, and it helped a little bit. The LQ9 is a little bit less sensitive. And so uh, it's cleaned up the knock just a bit, but I'm still getting some blips here and there that are completely uh, random. They don't correlate with like the same cell. Let's take a look at that real quick. This is our spark retard table. If, uh, you know, say we go to that cell there and it's always pulling two degrees, then obviously that's real knock. Um, but if it pulls a little bit here on one run, then it pulls over here on another one and over here. I'm pretty sure that's false knock. Um, and I did a whole series. I got another video that on on that um, where I call it false knock, where I was kind of troubleshooting that and explaining my thought process. Um, if, if at some point you guys really want me to make uh, easier to digest videos on how this all works. Let me know, um, and I'll, I, you know, I have a little production studio. I can create something better than this. It's just 
these are a bit for my own reference, and I thought they might be helpful to you as well. So what we're going to do today, I'm also going to go up here, despite having removed that in the tune uh, file, the config file I loaded, I'm going to go to engine. Hang on, let me show you. I don't know if I opened this with you guys here. Click that little button, go to engine, fuel, and uh, I'm going to also turn it off here because let me show you something really quick. Closed loop active. No. Okay. Um, where my little button deal go here? Watch this. Yes. It's, I don't understand this. Maybe one of you could answer this. Despite I've disabled the oxygen sensors, essentially, we have no long term fuel trims and no short term fuel trims in the mix. I'm still showing a short term fuel trim here. Long terms are just zeroed out, but, uh, and I'm showing closed loop is active. So I just, I don't know. I'm going to doubly make sure it's not using that. Turn them off right here. And now this says no. And it's zeroed out the short-term fuel trims. So hopefully that data is a little bit more, you know, I, I feel more confident in my map error now. Now the map error is coming off of this. I guess I could show you that really quick. We're not quite to operating temperature yet. We're getting very close. Um, if I come over here to map error, that is from AFR error math users. So I think I uh, went to math parameters and I made a, you can look at that. I made a, actually I took this from Goat Rope Garage. That's how I set that up there. I don't recall exactly how I did that, but I'm recalling that. I'm, I'm referencing that in the graph up here. And then down here, this is just an analog. Can I, uh, it's an analog pulling display properties? No, this, this is one of the analog channels. I chose analog channel one. You can see in VPI, that's the little adapter, channel one. And then I'm translating it for the uh, wideband 02 setup I have. I click transform, but you can't do that while it's running. And I'm using an Innovate uh, system, which I replaced my AEM system. The AEM system, I'll never buy from them again. Um, what happened was I bought it and the sensor broke. It didn't work out of the box. So I bought another sensor, but I didn't realize AEM modifies the Bosch 4.9 sensor. So that has a trim resistor on it. That way you don't have to do an open air calibration. I don't like any of that because every so often you want to calibrate that sensor. That way you know you're getting reliable data, not relying on some trim resistor. And uh, yeah, so I not knowing that I bought a sensor that wasn't for the AEM setup. And, you know, they're like 30 bucks. You go down to the parts store and a lot of data and all the data was garbage. And then I went and read the fine print in the user manual and I finally figured out there's that trim resistor. So if I ordered a sensor from AEM, then all of a sudden, instead of being $30, it's like $130. So I just went to innovate. I got a setup. It's a lot, in my opinion, it's, it's the, the gauge, the back of it's metal. It's not plastic. Um, it's got a nice little, uh, box that helps you uh, translate the signal for the gauge and you can daisy chain them and do multiple sensors and it's it's a lot nicer uh i we are at operating temperature so i'm actually going to throw this out i don't really need it i'm just going to restart the the screen here and i'm going to uh start logging data now I've logged everywhere on the map, but I didn't get like 2,800 to maybe 4,000 down here. I just want to confirm that I got that all, all done up. So I'm going to drive down the road a ways, and then I'll be back with you. Um, we will uh, log that little spot there. Okay, so I figure why not? I got you guys along for the ride. Uh, I did. I'm a real estate agent. I had to run by and check on a listing, make sure the contractor was there doing his thing. And uh, just uh, when I had to cut out earlier, uh, I, I pulled over. I find safe places to pull over. 
modify the tune, um, reload it, and get another set of data. Um, and I pulled over by a electrical transformer station, and a security guard pulled up to go in and check on it. I got out and talked with him a little bit. He was super nice. He said I wasn't causing a problem or anything. I, but anyways, um, I'm back. I'm just, I didn't make any changes that last round to the VE table. Um, the reason is once you make a couple changes, I think that it affects the whole, whole row. And I'm well within five everywhere I go. Um, you may get an outlier that's like, say, 7% or something. But if you look at this, these counts, the counts could be low. That's another thing I need to bring up for you. Um, you don't want to sample too fast. So when you configure these uh, graphs, you can set the number of cell hits required before it will display a value in there. And for the wideband, I put 25 with that analog channel. Now, I just picked that out of thin air. Um, well, my friend told me it works for him. I, I have a master's in engineering, so um, there's a very uh, methodical way you want to pick that, the number of cell hits and how fast you're sampling so that you don't get erroneous data. Um, but I just don't know this system well enough. I didn't design the engine and the engine controller to know how fast those sensors update and how fast the, the data is worthwhile looking at. And so long story short, we just make it a big number, um, like 25. And uh, hopefully that's enough to filter out the little spikes and, and uh, outliers. Um, but you'll still get some outliers. And so you, you got to look at that data with like a grain of salt. If you have all your cells are like, I don't know, let's say 3% and under, and then you have one in the middle that's like 12. <laughs> that's an outlier. That data is probably no good. Um, yeah, another thing to keep in mind, you notice these numbers got even better here towards the end. I did not change the table. Part of the reason for that is when you get out on a, a road where you can do like 35, 40 miles an hour for the whole run, um, your IA intake air temperature is going to stabilize and uh, it's, it's going to make this a lot, lot better. Now, I think the computer takes into account air density, not necessarily air flow. Otherwise, we would see, uh, I, tune, I started tuning this and in the late spring, early summer here. It's super hot. I live in the Sonoran Desert. Um, otherwise, when I come back in the winter, I'm tuning in the winter now, there are much different air densities and air moisture content and all that. Um, this just would look way, it'd be way off. Um, and it wasn't. So I assume that this computer is smart enough to calculate air density and figure fueling off that. Uh, of course, uh, if you look at the spark table, it says cylinder air mass in grams. So I think I think it can do that. Uh, a lot of these questions I have unanswered. So when you're tuning, it's not one size fits all. A lot of these, uh, you know, and, and my credit to everybody creating tutorials. I, I've watched tons of them. They've been very helpful. But it becomes very difficult when it comes to tune your vehicle because it may be a little bit different and you have to be able to think like a tuner and it takes a while to learn that quite a long while the learning curve steep and um then be able to uh cut, tailor something that works for your your build because like i said they don't all, all work the same um now there's a lot out there on third gen chevy engines which is what i have uh, LQ9. Uh, let's get up here and make this a little more interesting in the table. Um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, you, you just got to learn the process. Uh, and it, it's taken me, <laughs> I don't know, two, three years of fiddling around. I don't know when I finished my engine build. So like that 2.8 there, that's probably an anomaly. You see that in the middle of the range. Um, yeah, I'm just talking away. Uh, I'll put this whole thing up if you watch it all. Uh, thank you. Honestly, if you have questions, 
about your um, your tune. I may put my email on there. I'm really bad about checking the comments. Look in the description below the video. I'll put my email address. Go ahead and email me, and uh, and we'll uh, I'll see if I can't lend you a hand. Because because this stuff is very complicated, and your yours probably most likely isn't exactly like mine. I want to get up a little bit higher yet. Why not? I'm running the data log. I'm going to. Uh, Yeah, see, if they have a dyno, what they're going to do is they're going to sit on one specific cell until the number completely stabilizes, and then they're going to move on to the next cell. And that is, that's like completely unreasonable if you're uh, tuning on the highway. It's just so hard, unless you're a, a driving god, <laughs> you know how to hit these things perfectly. I'm really, really quite pleased with these numbers. I don't know if I, if I hit 4,000, then I'm really speeding. So I'll, I'll bump it up here just a little bit. I, it's very hard to hit those uh, cells there. I, I'm only supposed to be going 50 on this road. So my speedometers, it should be right in the computer. Yeah, that, that's good enough. And uh, I, you know, to be honest, I haven't got all the way out to 6,000 completely, but I think my power is is uh, dropping off at that point because I notice I'm not using as much fuel. I don't, that's another thing I don't understand. It doesn't seem to be requiring as much fuel past around 5,000 RPM. So I assume the power curve is dropping off at that point. And, uh, I, uh, whoops, see, there's an anomaly right there. That six, that five, these are, I think these are anomalies. I'm not gonna, there's a six right there. Can I get rid of that? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's gonna like, I don't think that's, that's correct. See, that one came right out. If I go over to the 1600, I don't have a vehicle behind me. Is he going to drop down? Yeah, for some reason now it thinks things are uh, lean. I couldn't tell you exactly why. Now all these it's saying are lean. Um, it, it'll do that. But I just a moment ago when I was kind of... I, whoops, I shouldn't have done that. See, I... I quickly change from third to second. That stuff will goof up your uh, your graph. And I would throw it in first, but uh, part of the trouble with doing that is uh, it's going to shift into second the way I have the tune set up, I think. So yeah, this this is really beautiful right here. Uh, just trying to think of some other things now. My friend, I, I made a good friend, Travis, he's a super cool guy. He's helping coach me to do this. I'd never be able to do this without him, just watching tutorials. I, I want to be honest, the intentions are the best with these tutorials on, on the internet and mine as well. But unless you know how to think like a tuner, <laughs> you can't really, it's so very difficult to do this on your own. Um, probably start with a fundamental understanding of the engine, let's say, and that's where uh, you'll get your foundation to learn how to tune. But then all the different parameters and settings in the computer are, are quite confusing too to, to wrap your mind around. Um, you know, honestly, I'm just kind of rambling on now. I think I got this where I want it. I'm going to let you guys go um, and... Uh, Hopefully this video helps you if you're out uh, trying to tune, um, you got an idea of how I do it. Okay, so I've done a little bit of driving. I pulled over really quick to start the screen capture again. Um, I'm gonna get back on the road here. You, you don't wanna be uh, smashing the throttle and letting off really quick and os you know oscillating the throttle. You kinda wanna be deliberate in your uh, 
your throttle. Um, after after you've logged enough, you'll start learning what you can get away with on the throttle and what you can't, so to speak. Uh, another thing that I see everybody talking about on these forums is, oh, I got my tune within 1% error on the VE table. I don't know how that's humanly possible. Of course, you could probably get a little bit more accurate if you have a dyno in very, very fixed conditions. But with road driving, I I just don't know. At least with this uh, P01 and P59 computer setup I have here for my Gen 3 uh, build, small block Chevy Gen 3, I I have no clue. And uh, the tuners I talked to that I, I that helped me, tra- my friend Travis, he, he says the same thing. Uh, it's, you'll, what you'll do is you'll end up going out and doing a data run and you'll apply those changes to the VE table, load it back up again, and say you're at negative three, then you'll be at like positive four. So it, it just, I don't think there's enough resolution in the system, in the, in the me- methodology of how they measure the air fuel ratio, as well as uh, the computer may have that resolution. I don't know, but I've not been able to realize uh, within 1% of air fuel ratio or even 2% for that matter. Now, um, how much does that really affect you? The truth is not very much. If you're within 5%, uh, I think you can still be well around uh, 14.7 for cruise and uh, your 12 points, uh, whatever you're using for power enrichment. Um, and those numbers are something I haven't settled on quite yet. Now, cruise, everybody knows, so I'm be at 14.7. That's kind of the, I don't know if we call it the holy grail or the, the accepted value. That's what the factory uses for uh, cruise and idle um, under normal conditions. Now, if you get into power enrichment where you're at higher uh, RPMs and higher uh, loads, then that's where things change. So I've got a tuned Corvette and that I think is commanding around 12 to 1 to 12 to 6 for power enrichment. Um, this right now, I'm, I'm just doing something similar. And, and what I did, I will let you know, is I... Um, when I started tuning this, I just made power enrichment super rich, like around 10 to 1, uh, according to the math. And then I shrunk my error till I knew I couldn't have so much error that I was lean. That I was like, I don't know, 13 to 1 or 14 to 1 because the error was so bad. Um, so I knew it was safe. And then when I shrunk that error, I could kind of narrow in at my 12 to 1 or whatever my target uh, power enrichment numbers were. Okay, so um, I have now entered my test run. If you notice, a few seconds back there, I changed my truck into second gear. I'm on a straight, it's actually a frontage road, very little traffic comes on and off this. And I just wanna hit these cells kind of up to uh, 4,000 RPM here. And, and the way I do it is very hard doing this on your own. I kind of, I shouldn't, but I glance at the graph and I go, okay, I need to be on 2400. I need to paint those cells. So I just look at my tack. I glance down at my tack back and forth and my speed and I raise and lower it till I've hit those cells. Now, I've got a car behind me and he's probably really annoyed, but um, what I may do here, because I, I need to hit some more of these cells is just let him pass me. I'm gonna kind of slow down and pull over on the shoulder. It's a, it's always, you gotta be safe. <laughs> uh, it's best if you have somebody that can come out here and do this with you and tell you, you know, slow up, speed down, this many RPM, that sort of thing. And I don't necessarily need to hit all these cells. Um, they actually look really good so far. I know up high, I'm, I, I kind of made this a little, I like this to err on the uh, rich side when I get to higher levels, if that makes sense. So the narrow bends, I'm all over the place in my conversation, by the way, but um, the narrow bands uh, sensors 
are not very accurate under high loads and high airflow regions. From what I understand, you can correct me if I'm wrong. So um, what I want to do, and they only work like within maybe one AFR, let's say from, uh, I don't know, 14.1 to 14 uh, to 15.2 or something. They're very narrow. Uh, actually, I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. I may, may have got what I wanted. They're very narrow in what they can see. So when you get outside their region, and I don't know how the computer sets this boundary, if somebody knows, tell me, then you're not relying. The computer's not necessarily using those narrow bands, I don't think, especially not when you're going into power enrichment. So on that VE table, you can actually bake in uh, higher or lower airflow, uh, uh, air fuel ratios. So let's say I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm at the top here. I'm 90 uh, kilopascals. Is that what that, I can't remember what the, yeah, KPA. I'm at 90 KPA or higher and 4,000 RPM or higher. I'm probably not using the narrow bands. The computer probably is not using those. I, correct me if I'm wrong. And so if you wanted to say have a 12 to one air to fuel ratio, well, you could just bake that in there. Um, and not use power enrichment. And I think that's kind of how the factory tunes the trucks because they don't have power enrichment turned on until 90% throttle. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know why I went down that rabbit hole. My, my mind is not very well focused. I'm trying to drive, I'm trying to do all this at the same time, kind of explain it to you. I think I got what I want. I'm gonna look for a place where I can pull over and uh, show you um, how I do all this with the table now. Um, I don't necessarily copy and paste the whole thing like they show in the tutorials. If I got a handful of cells that need changed, I just do it manually. Um, and then another thing I do that I haven't seen anybody else do, but my friend told me to do, who's also a, a big tuner, um, he said, you want that graph to be nice and smooth. So many people just, uh, let me show you here. I'm going to, we're going to jump over there. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to save this log file. My numbers are, are actually quite beautiful. I know everywhere else is good. I just need to get that little region there. Circle my mouse around it, kind of like through there. And those, those are, those are fantastic. So, um, log file, whoops. I'm always doing these incremental saves too. Uh, 11 log, let me just save it that way. Uh, let's go to the VE table. So where I'm editing here, airflow, primary VE, uh, is this table right here. Let's say I needed to pull fuel, but just like here, I will literally just come into the cells that I need and I'll change them. And you'll see these little uh, spikes or, or dents in the graph. I just come over and I literally drag them down. I hand smooth them with uh, the graph. And then I'll take this and I'll do a smooth between vertical bounds to get the RPM region. And if I have done it and it's not smooth uh, across the pressure region, I'll like hand smooth it and then I'll come and smooth it a bit more. So the reason why is so many people have spikes all over. This is like rugged, like it's all got acne or something. And uh, the computer, I believe when it's delivering your fuel, it's not using just the cell it's on. It's kind of using the cells adjacent and around it to to get an idea what fueling is. And if this isn't smooth, it's gonna, it's gonna do some weird things there. And especially when you're going from cell to cell, imagine you have one cell that says, uh, not a lot of fuel. Next cell says a lot of fuel. Next one says a little bit less. And the next one says a little bit more. It's gonna have a hard time to deliver that fuel. So I, in my opinion, you want this graph to be smooth and I think that's pretty good. I don't have a ton of experience with this. I guess you can correct me if I'm wrong. 
Um, but people just come in here and go, boom, oh yeah, I need to change it all. So uh, if I had, if I come over here, one that was like, I don't know, seven, let's say I need to change uh, this cell to seven, I would come over here, 2,855. Now I'd multiply that by, I don't know, 0.97 to bring it down, um, if it was rich, by 7%, bring it down by about half of that. And then you just kind of smooth around it, because if you got a good data log, you'll notice that, uh, let's pick one that's high here. This this one's 0.3, that's probably an anomaly. But uh, here we go, this is better. Say this was... Uh, you know, we want to get it closer than 3%, which I've found is uh, chasing your tail. But I'd multiply this one by 1.5, 1 1.5, uh, 1 those two. And then I just smooth these other ones out. And as you smooth, it's going gonna, it's gonna to automatically kind of bring you towards this zero region here. Or if you have a whole row where there's like a couple that are seven and the rest of them are five, Multiply the whole, or I mean the whole column. Multiply the whole column. And then hand smooth it. So that should work. Oh, um, I got to go. There's a security guard here. Stop. I pulled over in the wrong spot, I think. 